Hey everybody, welcome to Richie Nix Gaming. Uh, I'm going to finish up the Legend 2 League Championship, and I am watching a YouTube video called The Phantom Menace 20 Years Later by Star Wars Only. <clears throat> so let's just jump into this. Kurtz did not work on Return of the Jedi, which critics noted that he clearly had a lighter tone. It was more toy driven compared to the only movies in the original trilogy. I thought he should have died in the last one, uh, just to give it some bottom, some. Uh, did that not go over well with George Lucas? George, uh, uh, you can still have the characters in the future and dead time clothes. Did Gary Kurtz predict the new South Coast is in Star Wars? He stated in an interview about a departure from the franchise, I can see where things are headed. The toy business begins to drive the Lucas Oil Empire. It's a shame. They make three times as much on those toys as they do on films. It's natural to make decisions that protect the toy business, but that's not the best thing for making quality films. You were there at the beginning. You don't know how good it was, how important. This is it for you. This jumped up firework display of a toy advert. People like you make me sick. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I love that he just uses spaced clip. Poor Jake Lloyd. Thank you. 
Oh, interesting. <laughs> and it was hated. And we also wonder what the Star Wars prequels could have been if George Lucas brought in one of those three legendary filmmakers. Um, so, um, home run. Four eighteen. Travel across America in order to sneak into Skywalker Ranch and see an early viewing of Episode One. Fanboys was made a pay homage to the Star Wars fans in the early 90s and Star Wars fans in general. The biggest critique for the film would be that if you aren't a fan of Star Wars, you likely will not enjoy this movie. But even George Lucas gave this film his seal of approval, even allowing the film. That was really bad. The film is a fun watch for the Star Wars fan and to give the modern day fan a sense of a fan. Fanboys ends with a group of friends attending the midnight release for the Fancy Menace. The last words of the film were, What if the movie sucks? <coughs> Boom. Boom. Run. 462. The People vs. George Lucas, a documentary that covers the culture behind the fandom of Star Wars, but also covers the problems fans had with George Lucas over the years. It has been remembered as a controversial documentary in the Star Wars fandom. The title alone makes fans feel like the premise of the film is to attack Lucas and all his faults. In the film, fans and celebrities alike talk about the lead-up to the Star Wars prequels and reaction to the Fancy Menace in 1999. It also covers at length the frustration fans had with George Lucas's refusal to release the original trilogy as it was seen in years. The city opts for his controversial special editions. A common debate in this documentary as well is that the art belongs to the creator or the fan. The art in this case being Star Wars. This documentary perfectly captures the questions and debates among Star Wars fans. 
that they still have to this day. One can wonder if Lucas has ever seen the documentary. If he hasn't seen it, he is well aware of its existence. David Krause, actor who played Darth Vader in the original trilogy, was featured in the documentary and has not been allowed to a Star Wars event since because of his involvement. The Duel vs. George Lucas mostly shows the build-up to Episode One and the reaction of the audience and fans. If there is any curiosity as to why the fans that grew up with the original films felt like the Phantom Menace was a step backwards, this fan film shows just that. So I almost got hornswoggled in that documentary where I, they weren't calling it the people vs. George Lucas at the time. But I could tell from the questions they were asking me that it was an invitation to trash George. And I have issues with George, but I love that man. I would never, you know, and I don't talk outside the fan line. The fans of the original films had to wait over 15 years for the Star Wars film. Boom! Was the Phantom Menace really the best Lucas? 410. The Phantom Menace is more focused about the problems that fans had with the creator of Star Wars. What are the problems that fans actually had with the film? What were the problems people had with the Phantom Menace? There are plenty of reviews on YouTube by Star Wars fans that can explain the complex feelings for the Phantom Menace, but none of them have reached the popularity of the Mr. Plinkett reviews of the Phantom Menace. Star Wars The Phantom Menace was the most disappointing thing since oh. my son. I mean, how much more could you possibly fuck up the entire backstory of Star Wars? Oh. Made by the channel Red Letter Media, the Mr. Plinkett reviews are perhaps the best I hate the Mr. Plinkett reviews. I can't. I don't care if it's a character. I fucking Mr. hate that Plinkett voice, and I hate the jokes that come of it. Much praise for its critical analysis of the infamous movie. The character Mr. Plinkett spends 70 minutes analyzing the Phantom of Menace and talks at length about the problems within the film. Plinkett covers the poor plot structure of the movie, bad characters, lack of clear protagonists, and the movie having four different story endings. This review has inspired many other videographic film criticism channels and videos all across the web. After this, Star Wars fans began to point to the Plinker reviews for the best explanation as to why they were disappointed in the Phantom Menace. The reviews became an internet legend and the gold standard film analyzing on YouTube. Mr. Plinkett blamed the failures of the Phantom Menace not only on Lucas, but on those around him who worked on the film. A common criticism of the Phantom Menace is that George Lucas had too much control of the film. I'll take it. A few seconds. Which is actually what Lucas preferred. George Lucas has never been the common Hollywood director. If you study the work of George Lucas, you begin to understand how his creative control impacted the film. Lucas both wrote and directed the Fancy Minutes, and anyone who has studied Lucas will know that he's not the best writer. Lucas himself admits this, and he doesn't consider himself to be the best director either. The shortcomings in the writing of George Lucas have always been the characters and the dialogue, something even modern day Star Wars fans commonly acknowledge. Today, fans believe the Phantom Menace would have been a better film if George had not written the script. And perhaps they're right. Lucas seems to focus all his attention on the special effects and looks of the Phantom Menace. Stuff the story. Was the Phantom Menace hindered by its creator's complete creative control? That's what seems to be the Did you forget what you started to say? Some like Mr. Plinkett and Rose about the creation of the Phantom we're not challenging him in some of his decisions. When watching the behind the scenes documentary, you can see some people aren't entirely comfortable with challenging him his creative. You can see here everyone is mostly silent and offers no input for Lucas over the casting of Anakin Skywalker. Once he left the room, everyone gave their thoughts over the casting choices. This is an actual. I like his body language. This is not trained. And this one just hits the beats. Yeah, I was gonna say some people don't audition real well. This is not the first time people have said that the presence of George Lucas has intimidated from filming a Star Wars movie. During the filming of Return of the Jedi, director Richard Michael talked about the struggle with filming with Lucas around. He was quoted as saying he was like directing King Lear with Shakespeare in the next room. It may be hard to repeat the man who created Star Wars while on set of the next Star Wars movie, but film critics argue that George Lucas strives on adversity in collaboration with other creative minds. The original producer of Star Wars, Gary Kurtz, once said, I think one of the problems Lucas has now, from the movies of Empire, is the fact that he doesn't have more people around him who really challenge him. Kurtz was not a fan of the Phantom Menace. The writer of The Empire Strikes Back, and now two other Star Wars films, Lawrence Kasdan, seemed to be taken aback from the film as well. Boom, ba 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 boom. Four nineteen. I have no connection in my mind to what we had done. Your eyes are just like, what? How does this work? Even when Lucas originally saw the Phantom Menace, his reaction was quite tough. It's bold in terms of tricking people around with it.
At the first rough cut screen, Lucas accurately predicted the reception of the movie. But it is a very hard movie to follow, and at the same time, I have done it a little more screen than I've ever done in the past. It's stylistically designed to be that way, and you can't undo that. But we can diminish the effects of it. We can slow it down a little bit so that mm, if it's intense for us, you know, our regular person's going to go nuts. In February of 2012, The Phantom Menace returned to the big screen after being away for 13 years. Its return marked the beginning of a 3D re-release of the Star Wars saga. Each film would be re-released in 3D at theaters every year until all six had been released. And the first film in the lineup was The Phantom Menace. With the name Star Wars attached to it, the re-release films would be a guaranteed financial success. The reception of the 3D version of the film fared far better compared to its original release in 1999. Fans were still disappointed with at least the design and the 3D re-release didn't seem to improve the film in the way. Except for one scene that all fans of the movie greatly agree for the addition of 3D. The which happened to be the problem with the scene. This is where the menace, motherfucker, is 3D! This motherfucker is empty! Later that same year, George Lucas would sell the rights of Star Wars to Disney. I realized at some point I needed to retire, and I wanted to go on and do other things, uh, things in philanthropy and doing more experimental kind of films, but I couldn't really drag my company into that. He was no longer in charge of the franchise. Fans wondered if the backlash toward the prequels, notably episode one, was the reason he never returned to the wreck and decided to sell the franchise. You go to make a movie and all you do is get criticized and people are trying to make decisions about what you're going to do before you do it. You know, it's not much fun and you can't experiment. You can't do anything. You have to do it a certain way. If that truly is the case, if you'll be so exposed to the backlash to the prequels, the question can be asked. What would have happened if the Phantom Menace was a film everyone enjoyed? Would Lucas have kept the rights to the franchise? But as time passes, the story is more than the public history. And the history is remembered differently by those who experienced it. It's accurate to say the experience that the younger generation of Star Wars fans had with the Phantom Menace differs from the experience of the original trilogy fans. Older fans had their reasons for not liking the new film. But for an entire generation of fans, the prequels were the Star Wars movies that they grew up with. And the first one was Kids World of the Theater. That would be the Phantom Menace. The Prima Trilogy is now giving credit for its creation of a now beloved show for Star Wars fans, Star Wars The Clone Wars. The show takes place during the prequel era of Star Wars, after episode 1 and 2, before the third film. Clone Wars was created by Lucas and other talented minds like Dave Filoni, and now the show of Ron Pierce and Alex. It's returning for its second season in 2019, but it does Lucas and help improve the story of the prequel trilogy. For the kids who grew up with the Star Wars prequels, and years later were able to watch the Clone Wars show, build on those same stories and characters, the Star Wars prequels are films they have enjoyed and loved. Jesus the creator of the Clone Wars, Mike Stoklasa, once said in an interview about the prequel trilogy, I just think that the prequels will elaborate the history, while the original films will remain relevant for a while to come. The new films failed to create any iconic, memorable imagery, and it's all very forgettable. The fans may have proved him wrong. Over the past five years, fans have noticed the prequels have grown in popularity and appreciation. The Clone Wars brought back fan favorite characters like Darth Maul from The Phantom Menace. And now the character has returned on the big screen with his appearance in Solo, a Star Wars story. These appearances occurred because of the character's popularity. After The Phantom Menace, fans have wondered if the prequels be better films if Maul had lived. But Maul had made notable progression in terms of character and exposure due to the new stories he's been involved with. Where did this new appreciation for the prequels come from? Some people have always been prequel fans since their original release. But now that it's been 20 years, the fans that have grown up with the prequels see the merit in the films and even argue that they're better than fans of old give them credit for. I just thought of how I might redo the prequels and I wanted to know how you would do them and how would you do the story your way. I would have done it exactly as George Lucas did it. <laughs> fandom's newfound appreciation from the documentaries of the films like The Prequel Strike Back. Small communities in the fandom have also voiced their love for the films. These communities have put out theories on the prequels like The Ring Theory or Darth Jar Jar Theory that have become popular in the Star Wars fandom. Today, fans feel ashamed for the treatment certain actors received after the backlash towards the fans of Menace. Mainly, the harassment that was targeted at Jake Lloyd and Ahmed Best. Jake Lloyd was unfortunately arrested in 2015 and is now in a psychiatric facility where he's diagnosed with schizophrenia. His life was sadly taken down a different path than what everyone had hoped for. His co-star Ahmed Best went through a lot of struggles as well. Ahmed talked about his attempts at suicide due to the rat.
harassment that he received. Thankfully, we're on the face of the truth in his life. And he's often said that given the chance, he would do it all over again. In April of 2019, Ahmed Best attended the Phantom Menace 20 year anniversary panel at Star Wars Celebration. He received a standing ovation from the fans. Other actors like Ian McGregor, who played a young Obi Wan Kenobi from the Phantom Menace, have spoken out about the newfound appreciation of the prequels, saying in an interview, George Lucas wanted to do something very different with the prequels. That's why people felt cheated. It was upsetting when people would laugh and joke about it. Now, many years later, the prequels mean a lot to the generation that were kids then. So from smirking and cynical opinions, now we can feedback from the kids they were made for. I'm really happy about that. If there's one thing fans of the prequels and even the critics can agree on, is that Ewan McGregor is one of the best parts of the new trilogy. 20 years after The Phantom Menace, he's a fan favorite character, and there's much demand for a standalone film about the character, with Ewan McGregor reprising his role. Star Wars is a history of what-if scenarios. The one question fans will always ponder is what if The Phantom Menace was a better film? What if audiences love the film? God bollocks. Perhaps George Lucas would have never sold the franchise. He mentioned in a recent interview with James Cameron, his plans for the Star Wars Secret Trilogy, that he had kept the rights to Star Wars. What he notably mentioned was that the fans would have hated the films like they did with the Phantom Menace. But the Phantom Menace was the first Star Wars film that he was going to set up in the world. Would Star Wars still have been a perfect phenomenon? China's first Star Wars movie was actually the Phantom Menace. Not the original in 1977, but the rest of the world was able to enjoy. This led to a more interesting perspective on Star Wars for Chinese audiences. They did not share the same experience of growing up with the original Star Wars trilogy, and therefore did not have any nostalgia or fond memories of Star Wars. The Phantom Menace was a fresh start for the Star Wars franchise in China, and it did not perform well. Episode 1 only made $4 million in the Chinese box office. 20 years later, Star Wars still struggles to capture the attention of the Chinese audience. This easily could be due to the original trilogy not having the same cultural impact on China like it did everywhere else in the world. The Phantom Menace disappointed Star Wars fans. They eagerly awaited in the Star Wars fans. It also disappointed Chinese audiences who wanted to see why everyone spoke so highly of Star Wars. Different movies appeal to different people. In 1977, Star Wars was a different movie that changed how people look at film and how it made it. In 1999, George Lucas created a different Star Wars movie, one that pushed the idea of digital technology and is credited as the birth of digital film. Twenty years later, we still feel the impact that the fantasy has had, not only on Star Wars, but in the world. Jar Jar is cinema's most hated character, but he's also the first fully CGI character. The Phantom Menace sparked a community of fan edits that's still going strong over 20 years later. There are now thousands of fan edits for Star Wars that would not be possible without the Phantom Edit or the Phantom Menace. Characters like Darth Maul are still fan favorites and are prominent in Star Wars to the story. Fans have been asking for Ewan McGregor to reprise his role as Obi-Wan in his own Star Wars standalone film. Appreciation for the Phantom Menace has also grown, likely because the kids who watched it are now more grown. In a few years, a Star Wars fan will be made up of fans who grew up watching the prequel trilogy. The perception of the Phantom Menace is a lot different from the previous generation of fans. These younger fans did not see the original trilogy in years. They had no expectations for the film. Now that they've grown up with the film, it's natural to be nostalgic for it. Will the generation of fans growing up with the sequel trilogy repeat history? In 20 years, the last Jedi or the Force Awakens grew up upon with a newfound appreciation. Today, the fans of the prequels will admit the faults in its writing and dialogue. Most fans now agree that George Lucas had too much control over the Phantom Menace, but they also argue that he gets too much hate for the prequels. The year is now 2019. Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, will be the final installment to the Skywalker saga. This marks the end of the story that began with the Phantom Menace. Thank you. That was pretty close. Later. The film is still not a fan favorite, but it isn't slander than painted by the 
Is it just a nostalgia of the film that has modern day Star Wars fans defending it? Or was the film simply misunderstood when released? 20 years later, the one saying that seems to still fit the face of Menace best is that it's a pretty good, bad film. Hmm. Multiple. I don't believe that. I don't know what to watch now. Order of the Green Hand responded to a bunch of my comments and uh, they seem kind of butthurt. Like I'm not. I'm like. The point we made remains the same regardless of whether Brand 1 should be considered the series' first chapter. Alright, like I'm not trying to discredit the point. I'm, the point I'm trying to discredit is that it's the very first chapter. The first time it hasn't tried to get me to switch a picture.
fucking page is on. Alright. Chicka chicka you. So as you know, we're going to play Legend 2 League one last time, and then we're going to move on. Am I just going to win every other game? Alright. This is where we're going to end it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Please like. Please subscribe. Please share. And I'll see you guys down in the comments.